other people are going to think, what other people are going to say. You know, they might think I'm weird if I lay hands on somebody in the cheese aisle. You know? <laughs> Back in the day, in the Bible times, people were healed by very shadows. I believe we're going to see that again. But we have to be willing to get out of our comfort zone and to be bold for him. It's coming a day where we're going to have to be bold. That we're going to have to stand and we're going to have to say, I am a child of God. You're sick? Let me lay hands on you. Yep. I was thinking today, we're not live yet, are we? Are we? Oh, hi everybody out there. Welcome to service. Um, I know some of you are home not feeling good and we're going to be praying for you um, today because that was one of the things I was thinking about during worship. This place should be sit, filled with sick people. This is where healing happens. This is where your faith is built, where you can stand on the word and believe God for a healing that hasn't manifested yet. You know, Mary Ann during worship by the leading of the Holy Spirit said, hey, if you need healing or you have a fear thing that you want to break through, come on up and come to the altar. This altar should have been filled. It's hard to step out, Sister Jenny, huh, and do an altar call and nobody responds. We all need something. I need healing. There's things in my life, I'll be honest with you. I text Sister Ashley this morning. She's home with an earache, and we're going to be praying for that today. But I text her and said, pray for me. I'm super nervous today. She's like, why are you nervous? And I go, because my message isn't an inspirational, woohoo, feel-good message. It's a teaching and sometimes that makes it hard because we all want that feel good, yay, woohoo, praise the Lord. But teaching brings growth so that we can have those moments. Amen. So that we can have breakthrough. I think I'm just going to go ahead and flow, Reverend Jason, and then we'll do the tithes and offering towards the end. And then um, end the offering. So today um, I'm going to talk about how do we biblically deal with offense? And this is a really touchy subject for different reasons, right? Because you have offense, but you also have offenders. And so many times in the body of Christ, we want to talk to the person who's offended. And we want to tell them, get over it. Don't get over it. You're, you're wearing your feelings on your sleeves. I'm, getting, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit. But we never want to address the offender. And the Bible has something to say about both. It talks about the offense and what we deal with it and how we biblically handle offense. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But I'm also going to talk about when you're an offender, what the Bible says about that. See, because as we're building community here, and the more things that we have that we do together, Super Bowl, potlucks, all that, the more opportunity we have to be offended, to get hurt, or to offend somebody else. Super Bowl, there's two teams, right? And this is, this. I wasn't even planning on going here. Sorry, Bill always tells me, you don't need to explain yourself to people. <laughs> I'm explaining myself to somebody. This is not in my notes. But we had two teams, right? And we had some of us rooting for one team and some of us rooting for the other. And there was some fun banter going back and forth. Then all of a sudden, it didn't get fun anymore. Because somebody got their feelings hurt. Then it's not fun. So as we're building community here and as the more we do and the more time we spend together in church activities and the more time we spend together outside of church, the more chances there's going to be for offense. Yeah. It's going to happen. You're going to hurt somebody's feelings. You're going to be the offender. And guess what? Somebody's going to hurt your feelings and you're going to be the one offended. 
So today, I want to take this opportunity to teach. What do we do when we are offended? But I also want to look at being the offender. So many times, I already said that so many times. But we don't acknowledge sometimes the offender or the offense. Whoa, my typing was horrible right here. I typed wada wada do. <laughs> we excuse the behavior sometimes when people offend us. We excuse the behavior and say, oh, you know, that's just who they are. They're just kidding. Don't take it so personal. You know, that's just them. So before we get into word, let's pray. Lord, I just come before you right now, Father God, and I ask that you help me to give this message the way that you have given it to me. Father God, not just that, for the way that you're teaching me how to apply this word to my life. Father God, let it flow out of me the way it is flowing in me. Father God, I ask that we have ears to hear and heart to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. See, the Lord is teaching me this as well. Growing up, I did not learn healthy conflict resolution. And speaking with some of you, I know we all kind of feel that way. Like, we don't want to say anything because we don't want confrontation. But it doesn't have to be confrontational. If we will learn to hear and receive and respond biblically, it doesn't have to be an explosive thing that happens, that there's no resolve at the end of it. But we haven't been taught that. And there's a lot of things that are in church that we haven't been taught that we need to start teaching. Because this is a help center. This is an education place. Because, see, if we don't teach it, the world's teaching it. Yeah. And so we got to start teaching it biblically. So there's going to be some workshops coming around here and some classes that we're going to be um, having for certain um, topics like depression, maybe even have a class I might have call Pastor Mark, and I don't know if he's watching or not, but I might call Pastor Mark to come down and teach us a conflict resolution class. Because the world's offering all kinds of help. And they'll medicate you to help you. But they're not giving you the power. This gives us a power that the world does not have. Because God's word is life. And if we will receive it and apply it, it brings life to us. This is healing. This is freeing. God's word heals and frees us. So if you would, turn with me to Matthew 18. I guess I should read my own notes. We're going to read this out of the TPT. I was in the wrong Bible. I have both of them up here today because it was so good. I was going back and forth. Like I said, this is something the Lord's teaching me and, I, and I'm applying to my life. So... Um, it's eight, Matthew 18, verse 15 through 17. And I'm going to read it out of the TPT version. If your fellow believer sins against you, you must go to that one privately and attempt to resolve the matter. If he responds, your relationship is restored. Later on, I'm going to teach how we respond. But if his heart is closed to you, then go to him again, taking one or two others with you, so you'll be fulfilling what the scripture teaches us to say. Every word may be verified by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And if he refuses to listen, then share the issue with the entire church in hopes of restoration. If he still refuses to respond, disregarding the fellowship of his church family, you must disregard him as though he were an outsider on the same level as an unrepentant sinner. So before... I go much further into this. Let me say, um, let me talk about verse 17 and about bringing someone before the church. This is a very last resort. To solve a conflict or an offense that is not based on somebody's hurt feelings or a bad attitude. This scriptures here are talking about immoral situations. Things that hurt the church. This is not, oh, so-and-so hurt my feelings. Yeah. So-and-so looked at me funny. They rolled their eyes. They disrespected me. That's not what it's talking about. This is a whole different thing. It's a bigger than that. So I'm. we can't disregard this verse because Jesus said it, but this is not where I want to talk about. 
I want to talk about the verses ahead of it. Because there's things that we can do before it ever has to come before the church. So let's go back to verse 15. Can you go back to verse 15 for me? Because I closed my Bible. <laughs> if your fellow believer sins against you, you must go to that one privately and attempt to resolve the matter. If he responds, your relationship is restored. So see, when someone offends you, you need to go to that person and talk to them. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want to do that. But sometimes it's scary because we don't know how. So we're going to learn how today. You don't, when you go to that person, you need to go to them privately. And you don't need to take sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so with you. You go to that person and you let them know that they have offended you and how. And then you have to give them an opportunity to acknowledge, to apologize, or do whatever needs to be done. But... Before you go to that person, you need to pray and be open to hear that maybe you misunderstood. We don't like that because we want to be right. Or maybe you assumed something was intentional to hurt you when it was not. And I'm stepping on my dress, so these shoes gotta go. <laughs> I'm gonna trip over my dress. So, anyways, now I feel so short. <laughs> so, we assume sometimes that things were intentional, that that person did that on purpose to hurt us, when we have no clue what that person is going through. You have no idea why that person reacted or is acting the way they are acting. Hurting people hurt people. I'm going to use an example of a husband and a wife situation. Sometimes, try not to get too personal here. <laughs> Let's see. How do I say this, Lord? Sometimes a person's reaction is out of fear of the consequences they're going to have at home and has nothing to do with you. See, because we don't know what happens behind people's closed doors. And so it is not our place to judge if something was intentional or not intentional. You cannot judge somebody's intentions. It might just be where their mindset is at. When I get super busy, and I am in work mode. I call it the Martha mode. I get in the Martha mode. And I do. And I am busy and I am working. And I am running around with a chicken without a head. And then somebody asks me a question. And I quickly, sharply answer them. Because my mind is somewhere else. And it comes off as very rude. But I don't, my daughter shaking her head. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie's about ready to dance. <laughs> but it comes off as very rude. And it comes off as if it's sharp. Like it's, like it's just like a sharp sword I just threw at you. My intention is not that. My intention is I am so busy working, I'm answering you and I'm going back to what I was doing. I've had this happen. And it's something, because it was brought to my attention, it is something I am working on. And not being so sharp and not being so quick and short with my answers. Because it comes off as rude. We have to be careful when we start believing we know the other person's intention. <clears throat> so when that happens with me, people automatically think I'm mad at them. I'm not mad. You just distracted me from what I was doing. That's it. I'm going to throw an answer at you, and I'm going to get back to work. But see, after we speak to the person, according to the scripture, after we speak to the person, after you go to the person and you tell them, hey, you know, what you said really hurt me, or it really offended me, or 
this is how I took it. And they say, oh, I'm so sorry, you misunderstood. I, am, I, I was such in work mode, Sister Jenny, I didn't mean to snap at you, and I'm really sorry. We have to be okay with that. And not be thinking that we know better. If the person, if you can't resolve it, that's when we go and we get two or three other people with us, right? If we can't resolve it between the two of us, then we go and get two or three. Church, I'm going to suggest this to us. If this happens, please come to Pastor Robbie, Pastor Jen, or myself. There's a reason why I'm saying that. Because we have resources if it can't be resolved. And if we can't help you resolve it, we have resources within Church of God that will help us before we ever have to bring somebody in front of the church. Yeah. So I don't ever want to see it get that far. So let's go back to offense for a little bit. Let's say Sister Blue... <laughs> I didn't know how else to do it. <laughs> Let's say Sister Blue gets offended by Sister Purple. <laughs> Sister Blue tells Sister Red, and then Sister Red goes to leadership. Tells everyone. And goes to so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Let me pause here. Do not call your brother or your sister on the phone and ask for prayer because somebody else said something and you don't know what to do. That is an excuse to gossip. Yep, amen. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Guilty. I'm telling you, when God gives me a message, it is not this. It is this, and then you guys just get to learn from what God's teaching me. Because yep. he corrected me on this not too long ago. I was upset about something, and I wanted to call somebody. And said, just pray for me. I'm so irritated. And the Holy Spirit checked me and he said, do you need them to pray for you? Or do you just want to talk about it? Ouch. <laughs> I just wanted to throw up. I just wanted somebody else to hear how angry and how upset I was about something. That was really none of the other person's business. I didn't call them. I am learning to be obedient faster. So back to our sisters here. So Sister Red goes to the leadership because she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what to say. And then guess what? It gets back to Sister Purple. Oh, wait. Who offended who again? It's all right. We get the gist. <laughs> okay. And then it gets back to Sister Purple. And then... It gets back to Sister Blue, and now, not only is Sister Blue offended, now Sister Purple is hurt, too. So we end up with more hurt and more offense because we took it here, we took it there, we took it there, we took it here. And offense is contagious. Offense is very contagious. <laughs> When you go to someone to talk about how or what they did to offend you, there are some scriptures that lead us on how to do that. And so I want to look at those. If you will, turn with me to Proverbs 19.11. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified, and then I'm going to read it out of the TPT. I have a lot of scripture today. Very short notes, but a lot of scripture. Amplified first. 1911, Proverbs. God, our good sense, makes a man restrain his anger. And it is his glory to overlook a transgression or an offense. Now let's go to the TPT. And of course I didn't mark it in this one. Is it the TPT? An understanding person demonstrates patience for mercy means holding your tongue when you are insulted. We should never go to a person when we're angry. We have got to get our emotions under control first. 
Because, see, when we're angry, we say things we don't mean. This is something I have tried to teach my kids. When I am mad at you, and I tell you I need my space, you better give me some space. Because if you don't, that, that weak restriction is going to turn into a year restriction because I'm going to say it out of anger. You're grounded for the rest of your life. <laughs> but if you let me calm down, and you let me think about it, and you let me pray about it, I might even only say, hey, you know what, you really shouldn't have done that, and have no restriction at all. But if you catch me when I'm angry, it, all guns are coming out. The wrath goes up. <laughs> this is something even in marriage that John had to learn. When I was upset and I was angry, we were the opposite. I needed space. I needed to go to my room and I needed to calm down because I was going to say something nasty and mean and I was going to hurt his feelings and I didn't mean to. He was the opposite. He had to be in my face. we got to fix it right now. <laughs> but he learned to let me have my space and I learned that I can't just go to my room and have space and never come back and deal with it. But I had to take it before God and I had to pray and I had to calm myself down. Turn with me to James 3.16. And this one I am reading out of the Amplified. Oh, you guys have it. <laughs> For where jealousy and selfish ambitions exist, there is disorder, unrest, and rebellion, and every evil thing, and morally degrading practice. We should never go with selfish ambition. We should go without selfish ambition. Assuming we're right. I know that that comment that Sister Blue made was directed towards me. I just know it was. Really, how do you know that? You really don't. Again, we can't judge intentions. You don't know. We all, we all want to be judged with good intentions. Right? We all want to be judged with, with people thinking that we're, our intentions are good. So how can we judge somebody else? Go to Leviticus 19.18. 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. We should never go with vengeance in mind. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, 5 in the Amplified. It said, uh, just talking about love, this is a love chapter. Love is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. Love is not rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritated, and it's not resentful. This is characteristics that we need to have before we go to somebody and say, hey, my feelings were hurt, and or, I'm offended. And let me also go here, because a lot of churches want to teach you that it's not okay to be offended. Offense happens. You do not have to put your head in the sand and pretend that you're okay and that you were never offended. You are a human being and you're going to get offended. It does happen. Ephesians 4.32 but instead, be kind and affectionate toward one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? Then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. We have got to be willing to forgive. When you go to somebody that's offended you, be going with an attitude, with a mindset that you're going to forgive them no matter what they say. Go, with, go to them with a heart that says, that's not selfish, that's not seeking revenge, it's not like, I'm going to tell you you hurt me because I want to stab you. You hurt me, so I'm going to hurt you. You ignored me, so I'm going to ignore you. 
Those are not how we handle things. You were mean, so I'm going to be mean. Let's go to Proverbs 10, 12. And they amplified. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions, forgiving and overlooking another's faults. Hatred stirs up strife. If you're stirring up strife, you need to ask the Lord to search your heart. And trust me, when you do, he who is faithful, be ready. <laughs> but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions. So love doesn't go tell Sister Purple, Sister Blue, Sister Red. Because love covers it. Love keeps it here between you and God. Love covers offense. This is a hard one. I was up half the night last night because the Lord brought an offense that I've been holding to my mind. And I had to pray and pray and pray and pray because, but God, you know, they left me. They abandoned me. He said, you got to let it go. You got to forgive. Because, see, sometimes people offend you and they hurt you and they don't even realize they did it. They don't even know what they did was offensive. Or what they said. Like I said earlier, it's just who they are. We can't use that as an excuse. But sometimes they don't know. Can you pull up Luke 23, 34 in the Amplified? And then I'm also going to read it in the TPD. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they, then they divided his garments and cast a lot. Dying on the cross, people murdered him. And as they were nailing him on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Sometimes people don't know they offended you. And especially if you're not going to tell them. And then guess what? They're going to do it again. Because they don't even know. And then we're going to start thinking, oh, that's intentional. They not only offended me in this area one time, they've done it three, four, five, six times. They don't know. And let me just say this, young people, it is not okay to say something offensive and then say a JK at the end of it. <laughs> that is not okay. Oh, JK. Hello. <laughs> Especially when you do it on purpose. It's not an excuse. JK does not excuse meanness. Amen. Period. That goes for us adults, too. <laughs> But I know it's very popular in our younger generation to say what they mean but add a JK to it instead of addressing an issue because we have done a lousy job of teaching them how because we weren't taught how. So we have got to mature. We have got to grow up. See, a mature Christian isn't going to call me on the phone and tell me how sister so-and-so offended them because of what they said from behind the pulpit. Instead of going to that sister so-and-so. I didn't mean to point at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> a mature Christian is going to take it to the person and talk to them about it. So we have got to grow up. We have got to put our godly big girl and big boy pants on and be mature Christians. Amen. The world is watching. Yeah. Just so you know, you are being watched. If you proclaim to be a Christian... Somebody is watching you. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Young, older, whatever. I'm, I'm feeling, I know I'm not technically a senior citizen, but let me tell you something. I went to Disneyland 
in a quest to find out if I like roller coasters because I haven't ridden a roller coaster in 30 years, since 30 plus years since my daughter Kayla was born. And I'm like, you know, I want to I wanna go to Disneyland. I want to ride Space Mountain. I want to see if I like it. The next day, oh my gosh, my whole body hurt. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, I was thinking of Pastor John. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I used to make you do all these things. And then I didn't realize how much it hurt your body until now. Because now I'm at that age. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I feel my age. But it was fun. And FYI, if anybody does want to know, I did like it. <laughs> I had a really good time. So let's pull that up in the TBT. That's just a little side note. That's TBT. That While they were nailing Jesus to the cross, he prayed over and over. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He didn't say it once. He prayed it over and over. And sometimes we have to do that. Not necessarily for the other person, but for us. Father, forgive them. I know they didn't mean to hurt me. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they said hurt me. Father, forgive them. They don't know that what they did offended me or hurt my feelings. So here's the other thing. Offense comes from hurt. You are hurt before you're offended. Yeah. Think about an offense you have and why are you offended? Because it hurt your feelings or it hurt your pride. Somewhere in there, there's hurt that was birthed with it. So when a child says something inappropriate, we all laugh, right? They say a bad word, they're two years old, and they say a cuss word, and everybody laughs because they're so innocent and it just sounds funny. And they didn't know what they said was inappropriate. So even though someone might be an adult, their maturity level not, might, might not be on the same level as you. So maybe they're saying it like a child. They're saying something inappropriate, but they don't know it's inappropriate. See, we need to be people full of mercy. And we need to be people full of compassion. And we need to be a people that give people room to grow. That give people room to say something inappropriate and teach them that that's not okay to say. In a loving, kind way full of compassion. We need to be people that when somebody falls down and scrapes their knees, that we help them up and we help clean up the scrape. Because see, not everybody's on your level. But we also need to be people that are teachable because we're not always on somebody else's level either. Amen. The Bible talks to us about not being offensive, but it also talks to us about not being an offender. If you will, pull up Galatians 5.26 in the King James Version. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. If you know it bothers your brother or your sister, you don't provoke them. Pull up um, 1 Corinthians 8.13. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will not eat no flesh while the world stands, lest I make my brother to offend. So if it offends your brother to eat meat, then you don't eat meat in front of them. We can replace that word, meat, with if I know these jokes hurt my brother or my sister, then I don't need to say them. If I know that doing this with so-and-so will make them stumble, then I don't need to do it. See, so many times we want to talk about we're not under the law and we're free. And Pastor Robbie talks about this. Yes, we're free. But not everything that we do is profitable. Not everything that we do brings glory to God. We do, we're free to make the choice. 
We're not free from consequences. The Bible's very clear about not stumbling our brother or our sister. Especially doing it on purpose. You know, I know a story of a young man who came to his family and he said, I'm struggling with alcohol. I'm becoming an alcoholic. Well, half of his family decided that they're not going to drink no longer when he's in the presence because he struggles with it. And the other half of the family said, not my problem. I don't have a problem with alcohol and kept drinking around it. It's easier to pull somebody down than it is to pull somebody up. Yeah. And if you're struggling in an area, my suggestion to you is stay away from it. And if you have to not be around somebody because of it, then say it. When I quit smoking so many years ago, I could not be around people who smoked. I couldn't go on the front porch and while they were having a cigarette and sit there. I did not sit on my front porch for about four years. Couldn't go there. Wasn't judging them for smoking. Not my place. You all go out there and have your cigarette, but I, I can't come out there. Why? Because I would have picked it right back up. When you're struggling with something, sometimes it's okay to separate yourself. It's not okay to be mean and rude and mistreat people. And make it very clear, this is my struggle. I don't have enough self-control to say no, and I'm going to ask you for some of your cigarette. Sometimes you have to separate. But you do it with love. Here, let's go back to this if it if if um, the meat thing. Let's put sarcasm in there. Maybe I'm a very sarcastic person, and I can be. And I know that your that my sarcasm hurts you. Then can I control my sarcasm while I'm with you, and not put my my sarcasm towards you? But again, do I know if my sarcasm hurt you if you don't tell me? Do you get mad at, mad at me for something that I don't even know? Or vice versa? Someone gets mad at you for something you don't even know? we got to be able to be honest with one another. But we got to do it in love. We can't, we can't do it with a I'm better than you attitude. I know your intentions. I know your heart. Because God is the only one that knows our heart. And that can judge our intentions. So if I know that my jokey, my sarcasm, girls, hey, if I know that my jokey, my sarcasm, or maybe even my competitiveness, because I just got to win, and I don't care if I step on your head to win, bothers you, I need to be able to put it aside. Because of love. Because the Bible says, Back in Leviticus, it says to love your neighbor. So if I know that it hurts you and I love you, then I'm not going to do that. See, even Galentines. We ended up canceling Galentines. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we had decided we were going to go see a movie. And then all of a sudden, this movie, there was controversy. Some people thought it was okay. It was about biblical thing. It was about somebody who was in prostitution and, and came out, or sex slavery or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly the details of it now. It was based on a Bible, um, a book of the Bible. Do you remember which one it was, Judges? Hosea. 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 It was based on Hosea, right. And so some of us thought it was okay. But some of us thought it showed too much. It was a little risky. There was like borderline, maybe even 
Some people are saying it might even be um, labeled as soft porn. So how to make a decision? I canceled it. Because I didn't want to offend somebody who didn't think it was okay. Nor did I want somebody to think that it was okay because I thought it was okay. And I'm not saying I did. I'm just saying we have to be careful not to think that our way is the right way. Because sometimes it's not about right or wrong. Sometimes it's just about personal conviction. One person might think that movie was fine. It was based on a true story. It was based on something in the Bible. You see and hear worse than that on HBO. Somebody, somebody might felt that way. But somebody else felt like it wasn't. And so we canceled it because we didn't want to offend anybody. Nor do we want to lead somebody into something that maybe they have a problem with. So we pulled the plug. We're not doing it. I'm not saying that you can't be who you are. I'm not saying that you have to pretend to be somebody you're not. But what I am saying is if you know that this offends somebody, you don't have to do it. You can be mindful of that other person. That's, I'm talking about the offender. Now, when you're offended and you need to talk to somebody, you need to go and make sure that you're talking to them with the right heart. And not just with the right heart, but with an open heart. And an open mind to hear that, oh, I'm so sorry, you misunderstood me. And not be, oh, no, I totally understood what you said. You said this, this, and this. But again, you don't know what the intention was. You don't know what the mindset was. You don't know why they said it the way they said it. Like I said, I'm busy and I'm working. I snap. I'm short. I'm working on it because it was brought to my attention and I had to apologize for it. Because I did not mean to hurt somebody. Then I had to look and had to say, you know what? I get very much Martha, Martha, Martha. Busy, busy, busy. And I forget <laughs> what's going on around me. <coughs> so when we are offended and we go and talk to a person, let's go and talk to the person in love. And let's say something along the lines like, you know what? You might not even know this, but when you said X, Y, and Z, it offended me. And let's take care of it one-on-one -on -one and then bring it to others. And I, again, I'm going to say bring it to pastors because we have resolutions that are resources, not resolutions. We have resources that we can plug into. So we want to love intentionally. And love does not insist on its own way, even and often. We want to do life together, hand in hand, heart to heart, and shoulder to shoulder. And we want to love on purpose, with purpose. And this is part of it. It's hard to tell somebody they've offended you because we're afraid that they're going to attack us. So when somebody comes to you and says that you offended them, remember how you feel on the other way. And make sure that you receive that person with grace and mercy. The same grace and mercy that you want to be received with. And the same forgiveness that you want. The Bible says to treat, say it again, treat others how you want to be treated. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right. So let's be mature Christians that don't run around telling everybody stuff. 
and we take it to God or we take it to the person and forgive people like the Lord dealt with me with last night. I'm, I'll be real. It was just one of my children, you know, and it came back up. Your, huh? <laughs> Your dad passed away and you left me. And I was angry about it. And I took it personal. And it really had nothing to do with me. It had to do with I'm a young man and I'm an adult and I want to live my life. It wasn't an attack. It wasn't rejection on me the way I took it. it has no clue that even hurt me. Just the fact, you know, a normal mom child moves out and none of us want our babies to leave. <laughs> I would have all my chickens in my nest if I could. But that's not the way God intended it. I'm going to close in prayer and then um, we can stay online for the announcements and the offering. And then um, actually I'll just go ahead and do the announcements and then um, Reverend Jason, when you come up and do the offering, then can you pray out Facebook? Okay. And then um, Pastor Robbie, you're doing testimony prayer. So um, I'll go over announcements. We don't have a lot of announcements. Um, it's kind of March is kind of a busy month, um, but not, but not. <laughs> it's not busy around campus so much as um, I'm going to be in Fresno two weekends in March, and so. There's busyness there with the women's conference and then the youth conference. And I don't have the announcements up here, so can I just follow slides? Don't miss our um, Tuesday night devotionals. Um, Mary Ann's going to get ready to do a survey on that, and I would love for you all to participate because uh, we want to kind of know who's watching it, who's not, if the time's not working for you. She wants to kind of maybe um, see what might work better. So she's going to be making a survey. And when she does, I would like you all to participate. It will be anonymous, so your name's not on there. And you can be honest and not feel like you're going to hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> Are you going to offend somebody? So then our midweek service, we have our youth on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And I'm hearing great things about that. And we have our Bible study on Wednesday night in the fellowship hall at 7 p.m. I encourage you, if you have not been coming, to come. Um, Bible study has been, um, I don't know how to word it. it. It's changed. It's taken a shift. And it's very personal. It's a time where we're sharing. Um, Reverend Jenny's been teaching us different things. But we're also being very um, personal with and building relationships and talking about how we are applying the scripture or maybe we're struggling in it and we need our brother or our sister to pray with us over things so it's become very um intimate is the word i want to use so um, i look forward to it because it's not just coming and sitting it's also a time of fellowship and seeing one another and um, a little bit of um, socializing and it's been really nice Family Sunday Fun Day was supposed to be next Sunday, and we just realized that we have a conflict of interest. So um, that is going to be canceled for the month of March. No Family Sunday Fun Day, as far as no lunch after service. Um, we'll still we'll still have Family um, Sunday service, Family Sunday Fun Day service, but we won't have the fellowship after. Uh, Pastor Robbie and Pastor Jen and myself have a meeting with um, our district overseer who's going to be here. So um, after church, we're meeting with him. He's preaching at our sister church that morning, and then we're going to meet him after. And then save the date for our special service. Um, Bishop Sean O'Neill is going to be coming down um, Sunday, April 10th at 6 p.m. Um, it hit me the other day. Um, can you pause that? Um, it hit me the other day that he's going to be here most likely two years to the day that he was sat in the sanctuary with me right after Pastor John passed. And I'll never forget, he he pulled in and he came in here to be with me and the family and um, feeling like a criminal <laughs> because there was just those lockdowns and he, you weren't supposed to leave your area, but he was like, I knew I needed to get to you. And um, 
So I don't know if he realizes it, but I was thinking about it, and I'm like, it's probably almost, because I know he didn't come the day, but it was a couple days until after. So it could be the exact day that he came down two years. So I'm looking forward to that. It's been a wonderful journey um, of coming here and going to school. And um, this is going to make us official. He's a, will be no longer a church plant. We are Family Faith Tabernacle. We will be standing just like any other Church of God church on our own. And um, I'm excited about that. So, and then afterwards, we'll be having a dessert um, reception. So, you guys want to make sure you mark the date. And, um, okay, next. <laughs> I'm sorry. Easter basket blessing. So we are now accepting donations of Easter candy and other items, um, Easter-related items. If you have any questions, come see me. We want to do this for our neighbors. We want to take them a basket just to bless them. I was thinking today, because um, it's kind of like, what do you put in a basket that's for a family? You know, and I was thinking today, maybe even some fruit would be nice. We can't collect fruit yet. It would go bad by then. But maybe that week, maybe we can even put some fruit in the basket. You have an idea? No, we have plenty of baskets. We okay. were blessed with baskets, and COVID shut us down. So we have plenty of baskets, so we just need the items to go in the baskets. I guarantee they're going to like the chocolate bunny. Yeah. The 99 cents for the 99 cent store. Right, a chocolate bunny, some fruit. Just It's just to say, we just want to bless you. Happy Easter. We just want to bless you. Um, because we were going to try and do a bigger outreach, but it being... Um, Bishop coming that that weekend, and then we have Easter, and then we have something the following weekend. It was just going to be too much. Um, we have very little hands that work, <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, but that's the truth. And so um, we have to be careful with uh, what we plan. Oh, um, we don't have a slide for this yet because Pastor Robbie and I just got the date today, um, March 19th. It's a Saturday. If you could, please um, let Pastor Robbie know if you can come. We are going to have a church work day. Um, so pull the weeds, clean the bathrooms, deep clean the sanctuary. Um, many hands make light work. If you cannot physically work and you can serve water, please come. Then you can serve the workers water or a snack or, or something. You know, there's always something to do. So, and then we have April 24th, I believe. Yes, April 24th, we have um, Pastor Josh Montgomery coming um, to um, teach and preach here at our 10 a.m. service. He is right now our district overseer, so he is excited to come and meet everybody and to be here because he hasn't been here since he met with um, the group met with Pastor Steve about um, buying the property, and so he's excited to come and see what we've done and to meet everybody and and um, to come and just give us a word and, and to bless us that way. So at this time, that's all of the announcements I have. I'm going to have um, Reverend Jason come up. Do you have a mic? There's one on the front pew. The front pew? The blue one. Oh. All right, got to wait until I turn mine right off on that one. So I'm going to have Reverend Jason come up. He's going to do... Um, the tithes and offering, and then he'll close us out in prayer for those of you in Facebook. I love you all. I hope to, I get to see you guys here soon. Are they going to put it on the screen the ways to give? Uh, yeah, they'll put